Good afternoon, good morning, good evening. Whatever time you're joining me, I'm glad that you're here in this special episode of Unwrapped. What we're going to be unwrapping today is some knowledge. This episode is directed to those who might just be getting into vintage computing, might not have been around when the original PC XT AT expansion unit came out on the market. We're going to talk about first party and third party storage systems. We're going to do a low level format of a hard disk drive and then we're going to install uh, IBM Disk Operating System 2.1 aka IBM branded MS-DOS. So I've got the PC booting up the advanced diagnostic disket and you have to have an advanced diagnostic disk if you want the super easy way to low level format a first party hard disk. Before I get too far ahead, first party means IBM sold it for use with the PC. It was branded IBM. And I'm gonna have to, well, just move the camera around so you can see. Now IBM didn't actually make these drives. get in there real close. There we go. You just barely make it out in this lighting. The, the hard disks and both the floppy disk drives. Oops. Where are you? Yeah, I have a hard time seeing them, but there they are. So those were first party. Sold by IBM, branded by IBM, even though they had different manufacturers making them. Now, first party storage, for the original PC, there was no first party permanent storage. There was third party, uh, you could get a third party disk drive, hard disk drive, third party controller card. We're not gonna be talking about those today. We're just gonna be talking about the first party stuff. If you wanted first party hard disk on the PC, you had to have and IBM personal computer expansion units. That came out a couple of years later. I believe along with the IBM PC XT. That came with a 10 meg uh, hard disk drive and the controller card with the XT system unit, if you ordered it that way. In these days, the internal hard disk drive also known as a Winchester disk. Love those internal project uh, product names. There was no intelligence on the drive. All it did was record magnetic sequences in the patterns that the controller card told it to. So often you'll find times you might get an old IBM PC You'll take the drive out of it, you'll put it in uh, another PC or XT or even an AT. It won't boot up. Uh, the controller card might tell you that there's a problem with the drive. There might not actually be. Controller cards were paired up, not explicitly paired up. What I mean by that is uh, controller cards were compatible with only certain types of drives. And then once you paired up your drive with your card, your controller card had to low level format that drive, which is different from high level formatting. And that's what actually happens at the operating system level. So the low level format would prepare the magnetic surface of the disc. So then you could high level format it. Now, if you remove your drive from your controller card, it says you break that kind of connection the controller card uh, will establish that low level format. It will establish an interleave level, which usually is default with the IBM PC. Uh, the, the magnetic, or sorry, the aluminum platters inside the drive have to spend, uh, spin six times around. 
in order for the computer to read everything off of a, of a track. So the controller card does that. If you take your drive and you disconnect it from its controller and you put it with another controller card, potentially you might be able to uh, get it to work, but usually that's not the case. That's why they say uh, if you move a drive, move it with the controller card, otherwise you're probably going to have to low level uh, format the thing uh, to get it to work. So the system unit here, if you watch the previous episode, episode number 12, go ahead and watch that. I admit it's kind of boring. What we talked about, the expansion unit has two 20 meg hard disks uh, connected to an IBM Revision 3 uh, controller card, uh, which has some flexibility in the type of drives it can support. Uh, the first hard drive, you could support two 10 meg hard disks. That was it, you couldn't support anything else. So we're going to load uh, PC-DOS 2.1 on here. In order to do that, there are three ways to do it. The easiest way, where you don't have to know any debug commands or go into uh, a basic or find a third-party uh, low-level format utility, is to use the Advanced Diagnostic Disk. There are images available out there. If you have no way of getting it and, uh, onto five and a quarter inch, uh, feel free to contact me uh, by private message and we can figure something out. When you boot off the advanced diagnostic disk, you're gonna to come to this menu, system checkout, format disk, copy disk. We're gonna want system checkout. Even though we're not running a diagnostic, the low level format utility per se is part of the system checkout routine, so we're, we'll need that. <coughs> Excuse me, and like before, it takes a little while to boot up. Just the nature of the beast. I swear it's not COVID. Perfect. Detects all the devices in the computer. We're only gonna wanna run tests one time. It's gonna be on the hard disk. So I, uh, item 17, format fixed disk. It's the low level format and that's what we want. So we're gonna say drive C. Of course, yes, we're gonna nuke anything and everything that's on the drive. Even if it's in a format the computer can't understand right now, there it goes. So we're gonna take a break right here. When we come back, as soon as the computer is done low level formatting the drive, because it does take a while, depending on the size of the drive, 10 meg versus 20, or if you're lucky enough to have an IBM branded 40 meg hard drive, but I haven't seen too many of those around. So we're back. That actually took almost 10 to 15 minutes to low level format that 20 meg drive. There were no failures. Believe me, the system would let you know if there were, and we went from performing right back to the main menu. So now that we've low-level formatted it, what's next? Now we can do the high-level format and install an operating system. Now for the PC and XT with first-party permanent storage, there are 
rare exceptions, exemptions to the rule, but you need PC DOS 2.0 or MS DOS 2.0 or higher to recognize and high level format the permanent storage in the machine. You can use higher versions of DOS. Some people, their preferred version is not mine. My preferred version is PC DOS 2.1 because the majority of software that I have for this era, and you'll see it if you continue with the channel, that's what it will run on. It'll provide you a great level of, of conventional memory. So that's what I use uh, for the PC and XT. Now, if you have an AT, you have to have version 3.0 or 3.1 in order to high level format the 40 meg hard disk that most ATs came with. So now that we're ready to high level format this, we're gonna go ahead and reboot with our PC DOS startup disk. And since the PC and XT do not have any first party clock calendar, it's gonna prompt us to punch in the date and time. So we'll say today is March 28th, 2021, and it is 1700 hours. You can save yourself a whole lot of frustration if you put in the time as 2400 hour time or military time. So the first step is you have to use a command called fdisk or a short for fixed disk. And you have to create a partition on the disk. So you have five options, usually four there's five for this one because I have more than one permanent hard disk, so it'll select next fixed disk drive. I have not low level formatted that, so we're gonna ignore it. Just for giggles, we're gonna say for display partition data, and considering we just low level formatted this drive, there shouldn't be anything. No partitions defined, great. So we're gonna say create DOS partition. We want this version of PC DOS to make the largest partition size it can. Do you wish to use the entire fixed disk for DOS? Well, in the age of 10 meg or 20 meg hard disks, the maximum partition size would be greater than that. So there are some nuances that we might talk about in later episodes, but we can just go ahead and say, yep, use the entire disk. It, creates the records at the beginning of the drive, the master boot record, and then we'll want to restart. We boot off of our DOS boot disk. One unfortunate thing about computers without a clock calendar card is with warm reboots, it still doesn't remember the date and time. Now we can format the drive. So what I have told the computer to do is format drive C forward slash S, which is to tell it after it's done, transfer a copy of the system, which is two hidden files or three hidden files plus the command interpreter off of the DOS boot disk onto the hard disk to make it bootable. Press any key. It won't take as long as a low level format, but it will take a little while. So we'll take a break here and we'll come back when it's ready for the next step. So we're back. It took five, 10 minutes to format. And if you notice on the screen, we have the total amount of disk space in bytes. So roughly 20 megs. Remember in these days, hard disk manufacturer, uh, manufacturers actually based the 
data storage on binary math, not 10 digit decimal math. So 20 megs times 1024 kilobytes equals that many bytes. Uh, roughly 57K used for the actual system and then gives you the total of space that's left. So now that our hard drive is formatted, we need to make a place on the hard disk to store the DOS files. So we're going to use the make directory command md c colon backslash DOS. We can only have directories of a maximum of 8.3, but when you're usually doing directories, you're just using 8, you're not doing the dot 3. And now we're going to copy all of the files off of our floppy disk over to the C colon backslash DOS directory. But before we do that, one neat feature command to use is the verify command. And all this does is just have the computer go through and double check and be like, hey, are files being copied as they intended? We're not just not gonna kind of take the word for it that operations are going as they should be. So we'll turn verify on, then we'll copy all of our files over to the C colon backslash DOS directory. Now with DOS 2.0 and almost further up, on five and a quarter inch 360K discs, there was always a second disc called Supplemental Programs. I don't have that available in the studio right now, so we're not gonna copy that over to the DOS folder. Now one thing I like to do only because I'm one of those guys who's OCD about some things is you can customize the command prompt. For example, I type in the command uh, prompt dollar sign P dollar sign G. It changes the prompt. Now I have C colon backslash or root so if I go ahead and I type the command CD for change directory DOS, you'll notice how the command prompt has now changed. The prompt S, sorry, the prompt dollar P dollar G changes the command prompt to show me what the working directory that I'm in is. Unlike Unis Unix's or Linux, a DOS is not case sensitive neither here nor there. So I'm gonna go to the root of C, get back there. Uh, I'm going to create an autoexec.bat file that will tell the computer at boot, give me the date, give me the time, uh, change the prompt style. Because with an autoexec.bat, unless you tell the computer to, uh, prompt you for the date and time, it's always going to assume it's midnight, January 1st, 1980. So the command we're gonna to type to build this is copy con auto exec dot bat, which essentially is we're gonna copy the contents from the console into this auto exec dot bat file, press enter. There's no spaces, because just to think if it's a blank text document, so we're gonna say date, enter, time, enter, prompt, dollar, p, dollar, g, enter, and then press the, uh, press the F6 key on the left of your keyboard. It's essentially control Z, and you'll see one file copied, and uh, if we do a directory listing now on the drive, we have um, the command interpreter, 
which happened when we formatted the drive with the system option, our DOS directory, and then this auto exec bat file that we just told the computer to create with CopyCon. So let's restart the computer. There's no floppy disks in the system unit. We're gonna be booting off of this internal hard drive C. Perfect. It's prompting for date, 0328, 2021. Say it's 5.30 p.m. It's changed our command prompt style, and there we are. So to recap, we've low-level formatted our first-party IBM installed available hard disk, 20 meg drive. We've rebooted the machine. We created a partition on that drive that takes up all 20 megs. We've installed PC-DOS 2.1, and now the computer is ready to go. If you've got any questions, comments, feel free to leave them down below. If you like the video, subscribe, share it with your friends. What would you like to see next? Leave those in the comments too, and We'll see you here next time we get ready to get unwrapped.